things um, I've discovered about people. Yeah, well, we know what God's called us for. Um, but I, I just want to say that there's one thing I've discovered about people. Most people want to know what's going on in the future. True? I mean, you've only got to look at magazines, books, papers, and what you see is a huge... That doesn't feel right. Is that okay? Uh, there's, a, there's a huge amount of star signs, uh, you know, prophetic things. You can actually... I actually, now and again, I, I, I get someone tries to send me stuff to say, you, you want to know your future, you know, I'll, I'll do a reading for you. So there's all this stuff comes in because... Most people do want to know something about what's going to happen in the future for them, true? I mean, we can have ideas and dreams and various things like that that we, we can pursue, but to actually know something up there that actually is or could happen for you, most people like to think that they could, could hear that and see that. At least again, one, one amen there from somebody here. <laughs> And, and from the beginning of time, basically, since, since man was around and kept records, that's exactly what's happened. But the thing is, they've been looking in all the wrong places. And I remember when I was a kid, there used to be a song on TV, oh, on TV, on radio, I should say, uh, that was very popular uh, back in those days when I was just a kid, which is only a couple of years ago. But, you know, Doris Day used to sing it. Hey, Sarah, Sarah. Whatever will be, will be. The future is not ours to see. Hey, Sarah, Sarah. Ah, used to drone on. Haven't got Doris Day voice. But I used to remember that song and think, oh, how melancholy is that? You kind of like, what you're going to get is what you're going to get. Uh, but we can change things. And so we all want to know something about something, about our future. Uh, and so, you know, they used to get into all kinds of things and, you know, and, and Stonehenge and all things to know, try to find out what is going on. Uh, and I think those things are a trap because it locks you in to a certain, particularly those people that are following their star sign. For instance, you know, I, I'm born in October, early October, uh, so I'm a Libra. Uh, that means that I'm locked into whatever Libra says I'm going to be. And it's kind of like it is, hey, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. That's not where it's at. Okay, and, and of course the Bible denounces all that kind of thing because it's hocus pocus and if you don't believe me, just go and ask Daniel when you meet him in heaven about how well the guys did for Nebuchadnezzar compared to him and God. <laughs> and I think they'll fill you in pretty quickly uh, about how it didn't actually work. So we, we want to talk about today the gift of prophecy. Now we've been looking at what's called, there's nine gifts of the Spirit and we're going to deal with some more of them later. But these three gifts of the Spirit are what's called the, the vocal group, okay? So there's the, the gift of tongues, there's the gift of interpretation, and now we're going to look at prophecy. Uh, prophecy, the Bible clearly says, we saw that in Corinthians, is for our encouragement and exhortation and, and, and to give us some hope, okay? Uh, and we need, a, we need a hope and future. And God says very clearly that He wants to give us a hope and a future. He has no harm in, in vision for us, despite what some of the stars actually say about us. Uh, God has got no harm uh, in, in store for us. So the gift of prophecy is something the Bible clearly says we need to be looking for. We get the gift of prophecy in perspective today, and that's what I want to do. Because some people, I believe, have gone so far in this particular last, say, 10 years, the gift of prophecy, then prophecy, 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 prophecy. Everybody's prophesying. Everybody is prophesying all different things that God had told them about Trump. Uh, and you go, okay, and some have had to apologize. So where does it all go wrong? How can we get it all in perspective? How, how can we know this? Well, the Bible clearly, clearly tells us that that. The prophets that wrote the Bible, those that wrote the Bible, had absolutely everything word perfect, and they knew everything. That's changed now in this New Testament era, and I want to just re-emphasize that, that it has actually changed. So, but rather than, rather than just uh, bumbling along in life, God clearly says here that one of the, the gifts that we should ask God and seek and seek and keep on knocking, remember that? Don't just ask once and then back off. Push through. Keep praying. Keep knocking. 
uh, make a pest of yourself in heaven because God's got no stress values at all to worry about. He's, it's easy for him to look after everybody. Okay, So he wants you to have the gift of prophecy. He wants you to have one of these, these verbal gifts, these oral gifts, uh, because it's such an encouragement to you and to others and the church, and that's what God wants to do. He wants to release this particular gift to the body. But as we saw the other week, let's not get it out of kilter and, and everyone jump all over the place uh, prophesying. It says, well, the two or three, you know, and let the others judge. And so when it comes to the gift of personal prophecy, like, like when Faileen Spark was here the other weekend, well, that's a little bit different. She's giving one gift for that one, one gift for this one, one gift for that one. And, and it doesn't require, you know, uh, nipping it in the bud and going, hey, you know, pull this in. There's too many people prophesying. Uh, so God wants us, the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 14, 1, that we should seek earnestly the, best, the, the gift of tongues, but rather that we prophesy, because then people will know what the heck we're talking about. True? 1 Corinthians 13, verses 8, it says, Love never fails, but when there are prophecies, they will cease. And you go, now I've had people quote that one to me. Look, prophecy ceased. I don't believe in it now in the modern church. Well, you need to go and read that in context, because what it's actually talking about is when he that's perfect come. When Jesus comes back again, that's when it'll cease. That's when it'll stop, okay? And where there are tongues, they'll be still. And where there is knowledge, it will pass away. So if you read on, very clearly it's talking about when Jesus comes back. Uh, we won't have any need for that sort of thing. Right now, it is very, very clear uh, that we only know in part and see in part. And we have knowledge in part, okay? We, we can only see these things in snippets. Uh, almost like, if you like... Um, uh, you know, when you get those uh, dot, dot things and you've got to try to fill them in to make something out of it, God just gives us the little dots and we've got to eventually put it all together and, and get the whole picture uh, that way and it, it comes to us in part. That's how it works, okay? And so we quickly move on to get it in perspective. We get the gift of prophecy in perspective by having a look at this as well. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19-21 uh, do not put out the Spirit's fire, okay? And don't despise the gift of prophecy. The air hits it, knock, knocks it out of the ballpark. Uh, God is clearly saying in the New Testament, don't despise prophecy and don't put out the fire. You know, in other words, don't come into church. Oh, we don't want people speaking in tongues here. We don't want people uh, prophesying here. That's putting the fire out. I'd rather a little fire that I can dampen down than no fire at all trying to stir it up. And that's what's gone wrong with the church. We've gone, <gasps> you know, well, we don't want that speaking in tongues thing. People think we're silly. And I think I did relate, but I'll say it again. I was in, I was in a, 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 a combined church group uh, a couple of years ago. I was in Maribor, and, and I was shocked to hear this. This lady stood up who's not a Pentecostal, and she said, isn't that fantastic? She said, you can come into a Pentecostal church now, and they're, all, they're sort of almost the same as ours. I kind of went, what, how do we answer that one without getting myself in hot water? You go, well, okay, now that's scary. A Pentecostal church that should be full of the Holy Ghost and the fire shouldn't be put out and we shouldn't be despised prophesying or the same as any other mainline church now because, hey, we don't want that silly stuff, do we? It upsets some people. Uh, it shouldn't, but it had because we got it out of balance but well, we need to get it in perspective. So don't hang your whole hat and everything on prophetic words, okay? Because if you do, you might be disappointed. Why? Why? So it's got, hang on, it's got, it's got the doorknob over here that says, you know, prophecy is going to cease. It's got the other one over here that says, don't despise prophecy. This is getting confusing. What, how do we pull it in? How do we get it in perspective? Well, the Bible, as you look through, clearly it says don't despise prophecies, okay? Uh, instead, test everything. So we need to do that and hold on to that which is good. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Now, when I was taught to study, you know you actually can get taught to study. I was told this is the best way you study. Act like a sieve. Shake it and shake it and just take it. Let, let the good stuff stay in and all the other stuff filter out and keep the little nuggets of gold. Well, I want to tell you that's what you should do with prophecy. 
you know, shake it and shake it and test it and, and give it a test and go, uh, does, this, does this pass the, 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 whole, the test of hanging on for a little while, okay, and seeing whether it gets fulfilled. And that in itself can be another danger, and we're going to mention that on the way through, okay? So instead, test everything. Hold on to that which is good. Test the spirit behind the word. Second Peter chapter 1 to verse 16 says, you say, my goodness, what do you mean? Well, if you read on there, it's talking about the Antichrist spirit. You know, you realize that, that many people who uh, denounce the gift of tongues are right. God, the, devil can, the devil can make things sound just like God's stuff. You don't believe me? We're going to have a read on when Moses went to set the people free from Egypt on how far they went. But they got to a point where, you know, and there is some, some amazing, powerful stuff out there. And in the, in the coming days when the Antichrist comes, he's going to be able to do miracles. And they did. They, they made snakes you know, come from sticks like Moses did. But they got to a point where God just outdone them. Okay? And that's what we're going to realize, that God can outdo all the tricks that are going on around about. And there is some pretty scary stuff out there. There is obviously some scary stuff. Uh, so test the spirit behind the word because um, you say test the spirit. Well, is that demonic spirits? Not necessarily. Sometimes people have got a wrong spirit. True? We have a spirit. Uh, you, you know that because they, when, when Moses got frustrated with his leadership, uh, God said, well, okay, now I'll show you how to do it properly. And I'm going to get 70 people aside and I'm going to put the same spirit you have on them. In other words, the same heart, the same DNA, uh, the same uh, heart, heart love and concern, I'm going to put that on them. Because many people have got great leadership skills, and we're not going to deal with that today. They've got great leadership skills, but it's kind of like rubber stamp, you know. Oh, do that, do that, do that. And that's kind of how textbooks do it. What, what God wants from us is to have the spirit of Moses, okay? So the man can have a human spirit uh, that, can be, that can be nasty. Who's ever met some of them? Unfortunately, I've met him in church life. Never? All oh, perfect. <laughs> okay. Okay, I believe you. Okay. So test the spirit behind the word, okay? Uh, because I want to sh short shorten this up, we, we, we haven't got time to look into all of them, okay? So Bible prophecy, and this is what this would be, Bible prophecy is complete and it is full. That's why you can have faith in the word of God every prophecy in the Word of God is accurate. Did you realize that? The statistics of just the 40 prophecies alone of Jesus coming and his life from back thousands of years before, uh, as millions to one chances of it ever coming to pass, yet it all did. You know, it's easy, and I've said this in the past here, it's easy to go, you know, one. Well, what <laughs> can you go wrong with that? One, okay. But then when you go 10 chances, 100 chances, 1,000 chances, all of that then ramps up. The statistics is millions to one of it actually happening all together and everything coming to pass. Uh, but in the case of Jesus, just his prophetic things. Look at the things that we can see now that uh, thousands of years ago uh, that Daniel uh, interpreted in that dream that we've been looking at with Daniel. Uh, the chances of that coming to pass so accurately is amazing. Matter of fact, they think it's so accurate that it was written after the event. But it can't be because some of those nations haven't come on stream yet. And so God's prophecies, okay, they're complete and they're accurate. So that's why I say the only thing that you need to do to check everything out is the Bible, the Word of God. It is the complete book. And it, some people say it's not complete, but the Bible clearly sells, says itself uh, that don't add to or take away from these scriptures now, okay? So it is complete, and, and it is the Word of God, which the Word of God is who Jesus. And so this is, this is God, if you like, uh, in a little package today. It's inside of one of these things, you know. But we have some Bibles. I've still got some in my office and at home. Uh, those old type ones, you know, with the pages that blow up on the pulpit when the wind comes. And you know, the type of one, oops, I've lost me place. But you can do it on these too if you bump them. Uh, you know, so the, the Word of God is amazing. 
It's there for us as a check and balance on prophecy. So if someone comes to you and prophesies over you something that's outside of the limits of the Word of God, throw it out, okay? Throw it out. And that's what the Bible clearly tells us to do. Test everything. Hold on to those things that are good. Hold on to those things that you believe are right with it. So don't throw, as they say, in Australia, the baby out with the bathwater, which a lot of churches do. Toss all of that out. Now, we don't want that stuff. Now, the Bible's telling us, let it come in. Don't despise it. Go with it. Believe for that prophetic gift to flow through you. And God will teach you and train you. What happens is with prophecy, and the Bible clearly says this is how it works, Okay, we've all got the anointing of God within us, but what happens when, with the gift of prophecy and those kind of gifts, they come on you temporarily uh, for a moment, and it sort of presses on you. It knows a bit of experience that it sort of presses on you, doesn't it? It pushes and presses on you. The Bible clearly tells us that's how it happens. So the anointing comes upon you temporarily for that moment of time, and that's how that prophetic gift begins to work. So Bible prophecy is complete, and we need to understand that, okay? Why do prophecies fail? Well, we could sit here and go through a lot of reasons, but I've pulled out some that I believe uh, are just some of the key ones. We can hear from different voices or a mixture of them all, okay? And we're going to deal with this one a little bit. In James chapter 3, uh, it talks about uh, some, some voices that we can get involved with some places that we can hear from uh, that are wrong. Uh, and if you like it, in, in a simple nutshell, we'd all like to hear from God, wouldn't we? And run with that. But we, the, the truth of the matter is that we hear from our education, true? Your upbringing. We hear from that. So we should hear from God. We should also hear from our good upbringing, our upbringing, our schooling, our training, our trade training, or whatever. We hear from that, True? There's no point in me saying, listen, I'm a brain surgeon. I haven't done any brain surgery training. But I can do you a quick one online and help you out if you need it, okay? <laughs> I'm sure that makes you feel confident. You see, uh, but it doesn't matter, even with prophecy, okay? We, we've got to go into training. And just having a, a two or three hour program on learning how to prophesy is not going to get you the skills that you need. There's no better trainer than God. There's no better trainer than blowing it and getting it wrong and going back and say, where did I go wrong? There's no better training than that. So you will hear from different areas. You will hear. I'd hate to think that you'll hear from the devil. Now, Peter did that. True? Peter, Peter, on the one hand, not long before, was just being patted on the back by Jesus saying, you know, who, who, am, I, who am I? Some are saying you are, you're this prophet and some say you're this one and that one. But Peter said, no, you are the son of the living God. He said, flesh and blood haven't shown to that. In other words, God spoke to him. The Holy Spirit told him that prophetically that's what he was. And he said, man, you've got it right. Hardly got that one out. Then down the track, he said, listen, Jesus, don't you go and do that cross stuff. You're not going on the cross. Get behind me, Satan. I think, whoa, man, he's gone from there to there in, 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 in uh, what, two weeks, three weeks? What sort of period of time was it? Gone from there to there. So even Peter was hearing from the wrong place. Now, the other thing that we're going to hear from, which, which James tells us about, is from our feelings and attitudes. Now, the Bible clearly says, don't speak when you're angry. And, of course, we all do the opposite. Because the Bible clearly says that when we're angry, we may just say something that we wish we could push back in. And we can make judgments when we're angry that are wrong, okay? And we can do the same thing if we're driven with jealousy and envy. What do you think put Jesus on the cross? It's one of the most powerful, horrible faults that man has, is jealousy and envy. It's what put Jesus on the cross. Not anything else, not anger, not mob rule, but jealousy and, ang uh, jealousy and envy because Jesus was more popular than the religious people of the day. And so there's some terrible, strong feelings there. So, you know, if, if you've got a thing for someone, 
and this stuff is stirring inside of you. In the name of Jesus, I'm telling you, tomorrow you're dying. You think, I don't know where do you hear that from? <laughs> well, I got it. I'm accurate. You are dying. <laughs> Might take ten or twenty years, but we're there on the way. Uh, but, you, but are you getting what I'm talking about? So you've got stuff stirring inside of you. Don't speak out of that. It'll probably miss the mark completely. We would love to think, I've just heard from God. I've got it right. Thus says the Lord. There it goes. Uh, we'd love to think that, but we don't. And so there's a mixture of this stuff that comes out. Then there's another area, and, we and we're going to touch on it today. In Romans chapter 12, it talks about the motivational gifts, or the natural gifts that all of us have. We don't have all of them. But some of us have some of them, and some of them have the dominant ones, and others don't. There's one, one in there that's called prophecy. Or not, you know, a lot of people misinterpret that, I believe, when they're writing it, when they're interpreting in the, in the Bible. It's not really prophecy as in the prophecy we're talking about here. I believe that is talking about uh, the natural sort of way uh, that women and, them, and people have a sense, a sixth sense. True? You've got to get a sixth sense about something. Some of us are very black and white, you know. So like, you've got to see it before you believe it. Uh, and it's black and it's white and that's the end of it. There's no grays in between. But some people have this like this gut sixth sense. And I've heard people say, oh, don't feel good about that. True? Oh, that doesn't sort of fit right, you know. This. But some of us go, oh, yeah, that's right. No, it's fine. And then we get caught because uh, it, it wasn't fine. So you're hearing what I'm saying? So we, we can hear from that. And so when we put together a package uh, of prophetic word over someone, sometimes it's from that. Sometimes it's from a desire that you'd like to see them have. And then it's mixed with a bit of stuff that come from God and the Holy Spirit to give it to you. And you put that all together. That's why we need to try the Spirit. That's why we need to judge it. That's why we need to go take out the good and sift out all the stuff uh, that doesn't really fit and sit. Don't throw it all out sift it and let the good stuff come through whoa amen? amen so we need to get this in perspective so even though you know some people who have got the, an amazing gift uh, like um, we they had it the other night with other week with failing sparks amazing gifts still the same rule applies it's just that thankfully someone that's been on the road prophesying for so long she has learned the art of that gift really well on, on what's from God and what's out of her own feelings and what's something she de desire they might have for you. You know, we can, we can prophesy over people that, because we have a desire that we'd like to see them do that. So don't, don't throw it out and say, look, I'm not going to prophesy now because I just think I can miss it all the time. No, don't do that. Allow God to train you. Allow God to do it for you. Because I want to tell you, you'll bless your church and you'll bless people. Uh, and I've had people come up to me and say, look, God's just been sort of just stirring me you know I've, I've got this word that God's been giving me and you give it to them and 90% of the time uh, it's already something that's been going on in that person's life that God's been speaking to them about true so oftentimes a prophetic gift is already it's just a confirmation of already what God has been doing in your life and speaking to you personally and you get that and you go wow 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 you know uh, that's great. Thank you very much. What a blessing that's been. And that's what it's designed for. And so we need to get it in perspective. James puts it very well. The motivations can be wrong. We talked about that. The outcomes can be mixed and confusing. Test it. And that's what it says we need to do. So the gift of prophecy. Why do prophecies fail? We can fail. They can fail by not following through in prayer and testing of our faith. James chapter 1. And verses 1 to 4. I'm going to talk about more of this later because when it comes to fivefold gifts or the permanent gifts that God places in people's lives and ministry gifts, uh, there is a testing that we all go through. Many are called, the Bible says, and we'll talk more about that on the journey. Many are called, but few are chosen. You go, oh, that's confusing. Does that mean there's only half a dozen, a handful of people going to make it to heaven? No, I believe it's meant that few are chosen uh, for the ministry, because on the way they have failed the test and, 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 and gone by the wayside and left to go. It doesn't mean they're out of the loop and they'll never be back in again. It simply means that, that God just goes, go around the mountain again, try that one. So there's a testing, testing of your faith that we need because guess what? 
needs to have endurance. Have you ever done any training for the army or you ever done any training for, for sports and you ever done any training for, uh, you know, like I did when I was in my late 30s for the, um, you know, mine rescue? Uh, I tell you what, you've got to train for a bit of endurance. <laughs> True? And so nearly every afternoon when I, I would run around that 7Ks back at the back of the camp rather than catch the bus. But I want to tell you, easier to catch the bus with a 10-minute trip than run around the back way 7Ks on the dirty road in the heat out west. True? So there's a, there's a hardness out of it. There's a toughness comes in. You've just got to dig in and do it. So there's an endurance. It's the same with our testing of our faith. We've got to let it go through. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to pray it through as well, all right? We're going to pray it through. So don't just go, oh, that's a fantastic thing. What do you do now? Go and sit down, turn the TV on, watch telly. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's why it'll fail, <laughs> because God's given you a word, and he said, now I want you to go for it, okay? I want, you to now, I want you to now go for it, and I want you to keep on plodding away at you, keep praying to me about it, keep asking me about it, keep asking me how it's going to unravel, how it's going to come to pass, and that's what you're going to do. It brings endurance. Ask and keep on asking and ask without wavering, Luke uh, 11, 9 and 10, which is we had the other week, and James 1, 6 to 8 is a great one to read there, and I'm going to close with this particular one. Okay, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. This is how Christians ought to be, okay? Here we are. Verse 16 of 1, Timothy, 1 Thessalonians 5, 1. Uh, verse 16 starts, Always be joyful. <clears throat> Continually be prayerful. I'm giving up. I'm sick of praying. And we'll talk more about that up the track. In everything be thankful. Because this is God's will for you, okay? He wants you to be a thankful person. Don't put out the Spirit's fire. Don't despise prophecy. Instead, test everything. Hold on to what is good. And sometimes we don't read these parts. Keep away from everything evil. Ah, but I thought I could mix with the stuff in the world. I thought I could do the stuff. I thought I could do all the bad stuff. No, I want to tell you. Uh, if you want to frighten, I shouldn't use the word frighten. If you want God to, to, to start to leave your life, just get caught up in the evils of this world. All through the Bible, I see God clearly, clearly saying, I was just reading it again this morning. You know, we've gone, our church has gone through this thing. Oh, we don't want this holiness. We don't want this holiness speaking. I went to, I won't dare tell you, well, I went down to about two or three years ago, down to a lecture uh, from a Bible college doctor okay speaking about stuff like this and this mentioned this come up about holiness living oh and she said and she lost me that was it i wasn't going back to another lecture oh she said you know i'm glad i didn't live in those times of that holiness preaching and i thought wow you better go back and read your bible if you've got a doctor because i ain't got a doctorate but i'll tell you what i've read it right through the new testament keep away from things of evil don't get mixed up in it don't get caught up with the world because the world system will sap your spiritual strength. That's what will happen. You won't have the power of the Holy Spirit. You won't have the power for prophetic. I know what I'm talking about. You, you start letting the evils of the world start to permeate your life again. I want to tell you, you're going to lose what God's given you. And you're going to forsake the opportunity that God wants to give you. So I want to encourage you this morning. Start seeking God for the prophetic gift. The speaking in tongues, the interpretation of tongues. Start going for God. Seek earnestly the best gifts. And the next time we meet together, I'll be talking about the rest of the nine gifts, the other six that we can look at and how they operate and how they work. And so with that, so ends the lesson. Let's pray. Thank you, Father. I pray that you will just encourage people in this church to grab a hold of you, to seek you. And we realize that we can seek you, Lord. We're not going to get a snake or a serpent or anything like that. We're going to get what, you, what we're asking for coming from you because you are the perfect God. So I release on this church, I pray, a spirit and a desire.
for more of you. More of you. More of your gifts. More of your presence. More of your power. More of you, oh God, in our life, we pray. And everybody said? Amen. Amen.